Coming up on TechZilla, building a quiet PC, pro tips from Lloyd Case. Two small monitors or one big monitor, which do you choose? We got some router picks for iPhone users and anybody that wants 802.11 and, and of course a stack of your viewer questions. So toss your salad and grill some steak because TechZilla starts now. This episode of TechZilla is made possible by the United States Air Force, Squarespace, and GoToAssist Express. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Welcome to TechZilla. Hands-on reviews of the latest tech and how to make the most out of the gear you've already got. Whether you're beginner or tech support for your friends and family, if you've got a question about tech or the best Ben & Jerry's Froyo flavor, yeah. we've got an answer for you. <laughs> what was that all about? <laughs> Nothing. I'm just, I just you Froyo. Froyo. It's like all the enjoyment of the ice cream, but with, uh, you know, half the calories. Tell you what. We'll, no, I'm not even going. We'll go to the Buy Right Creamery and you can tell me about the frozen Oh, yogurt. I know all about the best ice cream places in San Francisco, but if we're talking Ben and Jerry's, it's all about the okay. half-baked froyo. I don't know. I'd just rather the half-baked ice cream. You can tell why she's skinny and I'm not. You'll also be thrilled to know that both Veronica and I have already dropped our iPhone 4Gs. I yeah. got this fabulous shot of the medallion on the front of a Rivendell Atlantis. It's a magnificently constructed small works bicycle and happily dropped the phone on the bumper not the screen. The bumper, of course, would be marred by the giant scrapey bit on the corner there. Yeah, um, I also dropped mine. I laid it down on a on a uh, poolside chair <laughs> on my vacation, and uh, one day after or after getting it, and slid off. Yeah, it only went about a foot, and I've got a little f couple little scratches here and there, but not too bad. Not like the kind of damage that you will probably soon inflict on yours. Notice on the bumper, not the phone it itself. It was on the bumper. Yours is hurt. It's actually on the phone. Yeah. Mine is not. Yeah. <laughs> You're not holding it right. Oh, do you want to explain this one? <laughs> You're not holding it right. Well, sorry, I meant to say that the bumper case also appears to fix the connection problems involving the new iPhone steel case, uh, bridging that little gap in the bottom left corner. And you'll, you know, see that signal degradation if you hold it that way. When I first got my phone, everyone was asking me, oh, you're left-handed, you're going to get all that signal issues. I'm like, ah, instantly, instantly lost connection. Apparently, From I full am... full 3G to nothing. Apparently, I am non-conductive because I do not get the, the, the call odd. drop. It's not every single phone, apparently. Yeah, it's but a little anyway, squirrely. Yeah, gripping any mobile phone will result in some attenuation of its antenna performance, uh, with certain places being worse than others, depending on the placement of the antenna. This is a fact of life for every single wireless phone, but It'll it just spun happens Apple to be PR. a little more pronounced because the antennas are right here on the outside, you know, exactly where you would hold the phone. Um, avoid gripping in the lower left-hand corner, like I mentioned. Uh, that way it covers both sides of the black strip and the metal band. That's the problem right there if you're covering that right. little black strip. Strip. Um, if you have cases on your phone, if you have a case on your phone, it should help that problem pretty significantly. Also, a few people have noticed, including Chris Perillo, that if you cover that little strip with a small piece of tape, yes. also helps. Yes, it was, but it was, then you have to put scotch tape on your phone, and that's kind of lame. The first one is actually wired, showed somebody wrapping their, their phone with electrical tape, which is uh, just a little tray the fabulous. Things we do. Yeah, the, the things the, we do. It's totally worth it. The, the, the Engadget article that has that quote that you read from mm -hmm. Apple also has the email back from Steve that talks about holding the iPhone in cell quality. Yeah. So apparently you're supposed to hold your phone like this. Hello? <laughs> yes, or Hello? use a bumper. Pause. In case you were wondering, Apple sold 1.7 million iPhone 4s in the first three days. Is it like. A lot of phones. That is a lot of phones. Isn't I think it? that's their biggest single day sale of, of a product. Well, it's like could three be days, though. Oh, over three days. You're right, that's yeah. single day sale. Yeah, it's a lot. So, sorry if you guys hate us talking about iPhones, but it's kind of a big deal. And uh, <laughs> there's that's a just lot the way of them out there. We'll try to keep it down for the rest of the episode, keep it to a minimum. In honor of Revision 3's fifth anniversary, we've sprinkled a few interviews Patrick did with fans that attended Revision 3's fifth anniversary party last Friday. What do you want to see more of on Techzilla? More on Techzilla. Uh, I guess more new technology, uh, covering covering how it works. You know, see, I like seeing uh, the insides and see how the stuff runs. Actually, you guys cover everything on Texo. To be completely honest with you, you know, I'm not a big gamer, but I would like to see what you guys like to game on. I mean, Turns out, I, quite a few of you want to see a bit of our personal gaming habits on the show. I think I can do something about that. I bet you can. 
PS3 gaming. Yes, PS3 mm. gaming, PC yeah. gaming, a little bit of Xbox gaming here and there. A little bit of gaming here yeah. and there. I will, you know, I, apparently I mostly play iPad games, but we'll talk about that <laughs> later. We also want to welcome Callie Lewis to Revision 3. She announced her new show at the party on Friday, Geek Beat. Callie's going to be delivering the latest tech news three times a week at geekbeat.tv, aka revision3.com slash geekbeattv. Jack and Owen are both upgrading their routers, and they've got some questions for us. Owen writes, hey, Techzilla crew, I am planning on purchasing a new router soon, and I would like you two to toss in your two bits. I'm having a tough choice picking between a fairly nice BG router for $35 to $40, or an all right end router for about the same price. I don't want to be stuck in the stone age with an old BG router, but then again, how quickly is the day coming where N will become as widely used as G? I would like to keep my router for at least two, three, three to five years, three and a half years, whatever. Ever. Cheers, Owen in Orange County. As I fall over because I can no longer stand. Your radiance is so powerful. There's a $40 N router. Actually, that's pretty cool. I would and like a $40 N router. Actually, you may not like a $40 N router. Why? Is it terrible? We'll talk about that in a second. Here's a thought, Owen. Do you own any devices that actually have 802.11 N Wi-Fi in them? If not, your idea to go with the much beloved, people really like this router, the Asus WL520GU, which you would then, of course, immediately flash with DDWRT is very tempting. Personally, I'm finding myself less than impressed with 5 gigahertz 802.11n performance in my house. It just doesn't have the range compared to 2.4 gigahertz, and it might be the adamantium frame in my house that it's killing performance. We're still trying to sort that one out. Yeah. Wolverine is my house. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta be careful where you I walk. hope they can fix that in post and make like points come out of my we'll fix it in post. So is is Wi-Fi 802.11n faster than BNG? Well, definitely. But it's not as fast as Gigabit Ethernet. And if you're expecting it to boost internet performance, don't. Uh, 802.11n's performance boost is best shown off during backups, big file transfers, and say like streaming HD video from your home server. Forty bucks for a decent router is really cheap, Owen. Uh, we're tempted to tell you to buy that Asus router now. And and in the future, when you look around and think, gosh, I'd really like to be able to stream HD movies to my HD TV without my automated backups to my home server sucking up all the 802.11G's bandwidth, you'll probably find today's top of the line dual band 802.11N routers to have come down in price right about to where they're comfortable. <laughs> Yeah, comfortable I mean, for you. a $200 router today is tomorrow's $40 router. Exactly. Especially if you're thinking two and a half, three years. Mm -hmm. Top of the line dual band routers include the Netgear WNDR3700 and the Cisco Linksys E3000, which, by the way, is just a Linksys WRT610NV2 with a new logo because Cisco Linksys has basically done fascinating things with their router lineups recently, which mostly involve taking the same old routers and putting new names on them. Both of these can support N on 5 gigahertz while delivering G and or and support on 2.4 gigahertz. Keep an eye, by the way, on smallnetbuilder.com's router reviews before you go shopping. They've got some great info on those cheap 802.11 N routers that are coming out. Single stream N products like the Belkin M150, the D-Link uh, DIR Wireless 150 router, Netgear's WNR1000 N150. They can be up to twice as fast as G under the right conditions, but compared to certified draft 802.11 N dual stream routers and cards, they're delivering weak performance. Seriously, think half the top speed and possibly worse than G in areas as, as the signal starts to degrade the cheap 802.11 routers, actually the, the performance falls off precipitously. Precipitously. I've been waiting years to say that word. <laughs> Jack, the web hound, writes in, I'm waiting for the July 14th delivery of my pre-ordered iPhone 4. I need to get a dual band wireless router to replace my 802.11G router. I expect to get the most from FaceTime over FaceTime. N. FaceTime over N as well as improving the video streaming on my Mac Mini 35 feet from my cable modem. Hope there ain't no walls, bub. What recommendations do you have for dual band routers? The best for the buck? Thanks. Yeah, sadly, the 802.11n in the iPhone 4 does not support 5 gigahertz. It's 2.4 gigahertz only. Um, a dual band router could still be useful for you if you have hardware that supports 5 gigahertz N. You'll definitely want to support N, not N and G on your new router like mix B and G networks. Supporting G and N on the same channel will degrade performance for the N clients on that web. Um, Netgear's $150 WNDR3700 looks to be the router to beat at the top of the line. For 80 bucks or so online, Buffalo's WZR-HPG300NH has excellent performance capacity for the weaker corners of your house. Yeah, it seems to have these strange antennae that stick out the top. At least they look like antenna. They, Buffalo actually apparently does amazing work in what would normally be weak reception 
collection areas. One last tip, by the way, along with not mixing 802.11 and in G clients, when you've got your new router at home, use WPA2 to secure your connection. This is a big one to max out performance unless you happen to have a Raylink uh, Wi-Fi processor, which actually accelerates some of the other stuff. Um, by the way, check out five ways to fix slow 802.11 N speed on smallnetbuilder.com. It's a really, really good write-up. It talks about, along with you know, using WPA2 for most brands of routers and clients and don't not mixing N and G, it's got a bunch of other really useful tippage. Nice. Useful tippage. Use Useful tippage. What yeah. router do you have? I have three routers right now. Really? <laughs> yes. Just for just you for don't getting coverage. I, I, okay. No, it's okay. It's a thing. I won't we'll ask. talk about it later. All right. Well, let's take a moment now to thank one of today's sponsors, the United States Air Force. Sir, debris heading towards our comm satellite. Impact may cut off communications with ground forces. Launch avoidance maneuver. Twenty kilometers in closing. A collision averted, sir. All objects are accounted for. Good job. Learn more at airforce.com. Welcome to this week's freebie download pick. A free program that we find useful, fun, or incredibly interesting. This week, quiz. If you need a quick break from the usual routine of emails, blogs, and content generation on your shiny OS X Mac, then give Quinn a try. This Tetris-like game features all the fun and skill of the classic original without having to go to a smoke-filled bar. The gameplay? Exactly the same. You need to rotate, drop, and correctly fit blocks as new ones drop and fall from the top. The longer you play, the faster the pieces fall. Sound familiar? Well, unlike the original, Quinn features an online multiplayer mode so you can test your skills against those of your friends, co-workers, and cohorts. Quinn also supports custom game board backgrounds, tile sets, and one slick looking interface. So the next time you need a break from the daily grind, play a round of Quinn. One word of warning people, it's addictive and we're not responsible for your losses of productivity. While the wondrous white noise from whirling PC fans might be soothing to some of us, for most of us, a PC should be seen and not heard, especially if it's doing double duty as a home theater PC. Here to give us some pointers and to make sure your PC hardware is seen and not heard PC hardware maven himself Lloyd Case it must be your new title PC hardware maven uh, maven isn't it no I don't want to go there it would be a mensch <laughs> PC hardware mensch there you go <laughs> um, Oh, for full disclaimer, I didn't build this system. Okay. I want people to know that. This is a system from Puget Systems. Uh, I'll slide this back a little bit. Obviously up in the northwest. Um, but this is a good springboard because you can buy the system as it is, mm -hmm. under 20 dB when it's running. That's, that's when it's running actual stuff, not just when it's sitting there. That's actually difficult to measure at that yes, point. Yes, it is. My office is 28 dB when everything's turned off. So yeah, I can't hear this thing when it's running. And being breathing on a bad day right. can be like over 30 dB. And, and they're just starting to ship a special edition uh, in conjunction labeled from uh, Silent PC Review, I don't know if you know those guys or not, mm -hmm. that's supposed to be 14 dB, but they said they really couldn't measure that because some of their LCD monitors are making too much noise. <laughs> I was going to say, at that level, <laughs> like anything much below 30 or 40 dB, you really need to, to stuff right. it into an anechoic chamber. Right, right. So you can buy this system right. off the shelf with all this stuff, but we'll talk about how you can do it yourself if you are so inclined. Definitely. Uh, this is an off-the-shelf case. This is an Antec P183. Mm -hmm. uh, what they use is a special Antec power supply that only fits in Antec cases, but that allows them to put a big fan that flows through and kind of turns slowly so it's quieter. They have a Gelid Tranquilo mm -hmm. fan, which is also on the cooler. It's the Gelid Tranquilo cooler with a very quiet fan. Um, plus, they source their components, like they found the ASUS 5850. It seems to be a little bit quieter than other 5850s. Oh, wow. Um, and then they did other things, like they replaced the, the case fan with uh, custom case fans, uh, scythes, I believe. And then they took the top one off entirely. Plus, they used this acoustic pack foam, which you can buy uh, yourself and apply, but then you have to cut it up and you know fit it yourself and all that kind of stuff. You can actually see if you hold this up in the right way where they actually had to cut, remove the foam to make sure it actually fits That's right. in the side of the case. I'm also noticing rubber bumpers, which right. will isolate the interior case from the... Cause this is essentially a drum head. Right. And the last That's thing you right. want, you don't want the drum head to be reflecting noise outside of the case. Well, Antec did some things with this particular case design too. It's it's steel, but it's got a plastic sandwich between the steel, so that helps uh, it also vibrate less. So basically, starting with the Antec case, this particular Antec case, the the uh, the, the 183 is beneficial right. because they've actually done some of the stuff where they've got steel free enforcement, they've got plastic, they've got ridges because stiffening the case wall is really critical. That's right. That's right. Aluminum cases are great for carrying around, but they make a lot of noise. <laughs> they do, actually. It's kind of like a car without insulation. Right. 
Somebody's not going to be able to retrofit this into a non antec case. That's are there, right. Are, are there much? Are, there, are, there, are PC, there are standard ATX right. power supplies that are relatively quiet. Seasonic mm -hmm. uh, makes a line of power supplies that are actually quite nice for in terms of noise. In terms of gaming power supplies, I, is anybody making a passively cooled power supply that's more than 500 watts? No, <laughs> not passively cooled. They, they make the, but they all have um, PWM controlled fans now. Mm -hmm. So they, you know, if it's not running hot, fan doesn't come on. I've seen, uh, I have a Seasonic in my system, I've seen the point where sometimes the fan doesn't come on for a couple minutes. Wow, that's a good so, start. Mm -hmm. Are, can you actually, do you, do you recommend people not replace the fan on a power supply if they want oh, to no. go for the larger, Stand slower? Up. Don't open up the power supply, <laughs> no, you know, big capacitors inside could be ugly. Because uh, as, as someone who actually shorted out a power supply using a, uh, a tab from a card slot tab right. because the bearing and the fan started to go. Mm -hmm. You Bad can even idea. go more crazy on this if you want to. Some things that they didn't do, for example, mm -hmm. is you get blocks of foam that fit into the hard drive cases to, to the hard drive bays to sort of reduce some vibration even more if you want to do that kind of is thing. There, is there anything like one of the most annoying things is actually the, 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 optical, actual, drive. the optical drive. Is anybody making a quiet optical drive? Does anybody yet? use optical drives? Oh, sorry. Well, <laughs> Blu-ray playback, until, yes. at least while you're ripping it, right. ripping your CDs. To um, store you know who makes a really drive? nice quiet uh, optical drive if you want to pay the money for it is Plexstore. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been using a Plexstore burner. I forget the model number piece. 940, I think. Plex Store is still Pretty the Cadillac amazing. of optical mm -hmm. drives, and Very nice. as you pointed out, you pay through the nose for that. What do you, uh, what do you like for the foam? Do you, do you think it should be on the entire interior or just the main side case? I think the main or? side cases. I've seen people like coat the backs of their cases. It, it doesn't help that much. There's a law of diminishing returns. At That's, some right. Point. That's right. <laughs> and you, you remember, it's even more stuff to cut out around and stuff like that. So I would just stick with the side panels. In terms of if you want to if you want to quiet down your PC, is it still like figure out how to quiet the? Because it seems to me the the graphics card fans are still the worst offenders. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's followed by the CPU fans. Right. And there are uh, there are actually pricier graphic cards you get with like big uh, side fans and stuff like that that are a little bit quieter and cooler. Mm -hmm. Uh, the problem with those is that although they're a little quieter and cooler when they're running idle, they actually tend to get more noisy when you are running a game. You may not notice that because you got all the sound coming out of your speakers, but they do get more noisy. So, yeah. How about water cooling? Would you, you know, are, are, are you pro or con on water cooling? That usually Depends on the water cooling. Mm -hmm. um, water cooling, everybody thinks water cooling is quieter. It's not always true because you got a pump in there, right? right. And that makes noise. But some of the sealed liquid coolers that are coming out now, I've got a. Um, one by a company called Cool It, called mm -hmm. the Eco. It's not an overclockers cooler, it's meant to run, and so I, I have it controlled by the BIOS in my system, and it's actually pretty amazingly quiet. So, but generally though, it's amazing actually how efficient the, uh, the air, basic air coolers yeah, are. Yeah, if you have a case that can take one of these tall coolers, uh, and, and you get something that's specially designed to be quiet, they're pretty amazing. Lloyd, do you mind helping us out with a question real quick? Sure. You're gonna like this one. Scott, Scott writes in, I would like to know if a single desktop can be displayed on multiple monitors using other multiple iFinity cards like the iFinity 6 does. I'm considering running four monitors, maybe more in the future. I ask because the E6 is over 500 bucks and I have to wonder if the same could be pulled off with two iFinity cards, which while still expensive, would be cheaper than the E6. Scott in Georgia. So does he need the expensive card? No, he doesn't. Uh, the question is how far down he wants to go because the iFinity card is $500, right? Uh, Radeon 5870, just the standard ones, still about $360, $380. 5850 is are almost $300, so you're still talking close to $500 if you want right. a fairly high performance card. Now, if he's not a big gamer, he can go down to 5770s, which are like $160, and then he can do it for, you know, 300 350 That's actually getting pretty reasonable in price. Yep. Any tips for setting up the Affinity before Scott gets ears deep into it? <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's very straightforward. The drivers are there for Windows 7. He needs, you know, the AMD has special drivers to drive more than three monitors. Windows 7 will do up to three without any problem. If he wants to do the whole thing where they're one big surface, you know, AMD's got that covered there. It's, it's very elegant, actually. Elegant is a good thing. DisplayPort, you like DisplayPort? Or? I do like DisplayPort. Uh, it's, it simplifies cabling, mm -hmm. high bandwidth. Uh, it's in a situation where you have uh, three displays attached to one card. The DAC is actually in the monitor for DisplayPort. That's, you can't have three DVI connectors that way. Um, so that's, that's why you need it. Are graphics manufacturers going to sort of push DVI away in the future and move on to DisplayPort? Yeah, long term, I think that's going to happen. Uh, in fact, you're seeing very low cost monitors being the, really the first ones with DisplayPort. I've seen $200 displays now with DisplayPort on them. Probably being bundled in large right. corporate installations. Right. But in, the, in, in Scott's case, if he gets two cards, he can just use four DVI connectors since he's going to be using two different cards. And be bathed in gaming or professional glory, depending right. on what he's doing. Lloyd Case, ladies and gentlemen, the man has answers. Lloyd, what's the best place to find your work these days? Maximum PC. I do all the graphics stuff for those 
those guys, plus some digital photography stuff for them. I'm doing a lot of laptop reviews for PC World. Nice. And I've, you can always find me on Twitter. My handle's Lloyd Case. Twitter.com slash Lloyd Case. Follow him, people, if you aren't yet. Do yourself a favor. Coming up next, more multiple monitor madness. We're going to talk about one big monitor versus a whole bunch of little ones. But first, let's take a moment for a word from one of our sponsors, Squarespace. Squarespace, people, it's a publishing system for anybody looking to build a blog, portfolio, any kind of website. It's really simple. You pay your money, they host it, and they give you an amazing tool, super flexible tool, makes it easy to build high-end complex websites without having to code. Now, if you're a coder, you can still get under the hood and manipulate the code the old-fashioned way. But either way, you're going to get the same functionality you're going to find in some of the most highly trafficked pages on the web. If you're on an existing, say, WordPress, Blogger, TypePad, or Movable type site, Squarespace has a site importer tool that makes it super easy to move stuff over. It moves your posts, your comments, your tags, your authors, and your media. You want a discount? I bet you do. I took advantage of this for PatrickDorton.tv. After your free trial, use the code TECHZILLA. When you check out, you'll get 10% off the lifetime of your order. Squarespace.com if you're building a new website or if you want to upgrade one you already have. Looks like it's time for another website we just can't get enough of. A website that we just can't stay away from because it's too useful, too funny, or just too darn irresistible. This week's pick, Garage Sales Tracker. It's summer, and you know what that means? Garage sales. I mean, where I'm from, we call them tag sales, but whatever you call them, garage sales, tag sales, yard sales, rummage sales, etc. It's primo time for finding treasure in other people's trash. Search locally for upcoming sales or post one of your own. You can even search by items if you're looking for something in particular. The only downside I've seen is that there aren't a whole lot of choices for sales on the site yet. It's a little bit new, but maybe adding some Craigslist integration would help fill out the gaps a tad. Where the site really shines is searching for consignment shops and flea markets. You can plan a whole weekend's worth of rummaging in your neighborhood and beyond. Download the iPhone app and you'll be able to spend all day out and on the go searching for that perfect bargain. Visit GarageSalesTracker.com today. Adam sent us in this really weird kind of looking video question asking, well, you know what, we'll just let Adam ask. Hello, Hello Patrick, Patrick and Veronica. Veronica. I'm going off to college in the fall and was wondering what type of monitor setup I should go with. Two smaller screens or just one big monitor? What would you two suggest? Thanks, love the show. Ah, that's some spacey effects you got there. You look like one of those sanctimonious disembodied alien races the Enterprise also seems to be running into. You are a biped that eats food. How ah. quaint. <laughs> I poop energy. Anyway, on to your question. Um, what would be a better monitor choice for a student heading towards college? Would it be two small screens or one big one? Well, it depends on your budget and the amount of space you've got in that little dorm room. And if you're entertaining. Like the big, like, uh, no, I don't, watch, <laughs> I've got a bunch of no, questions. We don't mean you personally. We mean if you're going to be having friends over to watch right. things, perhaps. Yeah, well, I, I mean, one, it, look, this seems can be an entertaining, entertaining monitor. judging by his video question. That you bring this up, it is a valid point. Right, if, but if you want to have, like, you know, eight people stuffed into your dorm room mm -hmm. watching a movie, like having the biggest monitor you can get is not a bad idea. Yeah, but that's got to put them in, like, over $300 for, like, a 27-inch at least. I've been shocked what people, as people are up upgrading their HD TVs, what, what's showed up on Craigslist and stuff. Yeah. And I'm going to bring that up because a lot of people are like, can I use an HD TV for my desktop? And it's not really that great because even at 1080p, 1080p isn't bad, especially on a smaller monitor. But if you're looking at like a big monitor, like a 40-inch monitor, like say dad's going to sell your old monitor at a discount. Um, do you, you know. know, my friend Dan has a, <laughs> uh, granted he works for PC Gamer, so he kind of right. gets away with it, but he's got like a 46-inch television on his desk as right. his computer monitor, and he's like three feet away from it, tops. Yeah, you basically want sort of a 30 to 35 Not degree healthy. angle for the sort of diagonal corners of the monitor yeah. to you. So the giant monitors don't work so well on a desktop. So anyway, so that, that's going to put you over the 300 price range yeah. and up for something of that size, most likely, unless you can find a really, really great deal, maybe a refurbished unit or something. Right. You can get a decent 21-inch or 23-inch in the sub-$200 range, and that would still probably fit most of your needs if you're just going to get that one central monitor. You can go even cheaper if price is your biggest sticking point. Yeah, I mean, you, you keep an eye on Costco, like 20-inch monitor 
monitors are like the new 19, 17 inch monitor. They're stupid cheap these days. Samsung monitors you tend to be really, really reliable. Um, mm -hmm. Dell Outlet is a good place to shop. I, I bought three of my last four monitors the on the Dell, Dell Outlet. Nice. And Dell monitors are super nice. I, I love a, Dell monitors. Like a 22, 23 inch ultra sharp for mm -hmm. 186 bucks. But then you have to think about your layout. Is it going to be like, you know, two monitors kind of give you more flexibility for your layout? One monitor, like being your main task central computing mm -hmm. monitor and then having a second monitor, maybe a smaller one, as like your, you know, put TweetDeck over there, right. your email client, your calendar, that kind of stuff. I use a 24-inch monitor as my main monitor, and then I use my laptop um, on a dock as my smaller monitor. Oh, funny. So I have both open at the same time, and I can I can put my TweetDeck and everything over on that side and still have the main monitor as my as my main screen. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I wanted to get a 27-inch monitor, and then I realized that I'm just going to keep my 22-inch monitor and a second 20-inch monitor. Mm -hmm. And because a lot of people, like she said, a lot of people either split, like if you're video editing or photo editing, you put the big picture up on one screen and all of your little palettes on the other. And Or, you know what you can do? Oh. You can go to your college and kind of poke around and see if they're throwing out any old monitors. And you can hook up with the iFinity and have like six 19-inch monitors. You could probably get those for under 300. As long as you don't, you know, end up heating your dorm room to a boiling temperature. But that'd be pretty. That'd be pretty badass. That'd be pretty badass. Anyway, so I, 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 I think are we both saying go with multiple monitors so you can say, afford it? I would say go with one decent size monitor, and then if you want to add an additional second smaller money. monitor for layout purposes for overflow, then <laughs> then do that. Coming up next, we've got some viewer questions to finish off the show. But first, a word from our sponsor, go to Assist Express. Not too long ago, my mom was having some trouble with her computer. She's on a pretty old machine and doesn't always know how to fix it when things are going wrong. All I had to do was send her an email with my GoToAssist Express link, and I was able to hop onto her machine, no problem. The whole thing took about five minutes to fix, and I didn't have to waste time with the explanations over the phone. As long as you both have an internet connection, GoToAssist Express makes it painless to help people with their computer troubles, share a screen, and live chat, regardless of whether you're on a Mac or a PC. It can save you time, money, and a whole lot of frustration. Try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, you must visit GoToAssist.com slash Texilla. That's GoToAssist.com slash Texilla for a free trial. Guy out in San Ramon asked us, my Xbox 360 just happened to get the red ring a couple of days after the new Xbox 360 had come out. I only use my 360 for gaming and watching DVDs. Would you recommend getting the brand new 360 or should I get a discounted, outdated 360? $300 is somewhat a lot, especially when I want the iPhone 4, but if I were to get the discounted 360s, I'd have to have the dreaded $100 wireless adapter. What should I do? How fortuitous, Guy. We had an on last week to talk about the new Xbox 360 and two of the crucial things that stick out on the new machine are lower power consumption and lower sound levels when you're using it. You can get an Xbox Arcade new for 150 bucks until they run out. You'll miss out on two things though. One, the $100 wireless and adapter, which you talked about, and a 250 gigabyte hard drive, which is worth something like another 120 bucks. If you can live without the hard drive and stick with USB flash drives for storage, you'll spend about $250 before taxes for a machine that can do both. That's only 50 bucks less than the new Xbox, plus the governor's cut at like 9% in this part of the state. You could go refurbished, but you might end up with the older machine that already mm -hmm. has the red ring of death issues and has been returned and repaired and <laughs> resubmitted into the system. And if you go to a place like GameStop, you'll be paying 140 bucks for a machine without a hard Whoa. drive. So let's wrap it up. If you really want to save every cent, go with an Xbox Arcade and wireless for about 250 bucks. Use USB flash drives, up to 16 gigabyte drives for storage, which are like 30 bucks a pop, depending on where you're buying them. If you want the latest and greatest with built-in wireless in and, and a 250 gigabyte hard drive, you're only going to spend 50 bucks more to get the new well, Xbox. No. I'm, I'm leaning towards the new Xbox because, hey. It's got the, the, the sexy slimness, the shiny black shininess. <laughs> the shiny black shininess. And you know what? The it, tiny sleekness. And hopefully it doesn't have any of the RROD issues. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. Just sell like a quarter of your kidney or something. That's like 50 bucks. Just don't eat lunch for a couple of weeks. Yeah. 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 It's Get an a Xbox. Around. Come on. It's worth it, right? <laughs> Before we go on, here's one last email, and this one's from Jenny. Just watch your last episode where you were talking about the population density of UK versus US. So I just had to look up Canada's. Oh, Canada. Smiley face. <laughs> I found one site that posted 8.3 per square mile, and I live in a small town of about 1,500 people in a rural area. 
My high-speed internet is way slower than you guys get, and a lot of people out here are still on dial-up. But my cell coverage is great. Unfortunately, our rates for cell and high-speed are much higher than you folks. Just thought you might want to know. Jenny. Thanks, Jenny. Very interesting. It is. Well, you got to remember, like, Canada has the population of California spread across spread the... Spread out, like, an entire continent. Yes. According <laughs> or at least to, the northern half yeah. of Northern America. <laughs> According to Stats Canada, uh, Canada has a population a little over 34 million, although it's the second largest country by landmass. <laughs> of that, roughly 90% of the population live within 100 miles from the U.S. border. Uh, that makes for one long strip of people. Far north of there, though, is Wolverine and his logging buddies. Yes. Yes. Chink. <laughs> <laughs> By comparison, California, as Patrick mentioned, our home state has about 37 million people packed into just 163.6 thousand miles versus Canada's 3.8 million square miles. Our population density is 234.4 peoples per square mile. That kind of explains the, uh, the higher cost of your cell and data plans, services, yeah. and whatnot. And since like more than half, almost two-thirds of those people live between San Francisco, Sacramento, and L.A., it explains yeah. the traffic. Yeah, that <laughs> explains it. Hey, before we go, I wanted to show off a cool new thing I got. It's called the Dodo case. I know we weren't going to talk about iPhone, but it's not the same. It's That's an iPad. An iPad. <laughs> it's an iPad. But this is an iPad case. It's called the Dodo case. and uh, Lovingly hand-assembled by artisans in San Francisco, yes, California. Yes, they're all handmade, and they're actually partially built in our own building, mm -hmm. in this very building. And it's beautiful. It's got this lovely bamboo here, and your, your iPad just snaps right in. It covers up. It's faux leather, but it's still super, super nice. It's kind of like a moleskin for your yeah, iPad. Absolutely and then does. it snaps shut right here. Those are selling for 50 bucks now. Possibly by the time you're getting this, they're going to be up to the regular price of 60 bucks. But check out the website, yeah, dodocase.com. Dodocase.com. It really does have the best book plate ever. The Dodo. I know. <laughs> yeah, little Dodo. <laughs> He's extinct. Poor Dodo. But anyway, I just wanted to show that off because I thought it was a super nice way to kind of cart around your iPad. May I touch the Not my personal us? iPad, unfortunately. It is Revision 3's iPad. But And look, you can use it. You can actually use it as a case if you stick these in here, I think. Like that. No, that didn't work. Oh, you flip it. Like, yeah, you just kind of put it like that. It's more. There is a way to use it as a case. I just haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> anyway, hey, did you guys know that we actually have an iPhone app? Now you can watch Revision 3 on the go with the new official Revision 3 iPhone app. Watch all your favorite Revision 3 shows like Dignation, Taxilla, App Judgment, and more for free on your iPhone, available in the iTunes store for download. Or go to revision3.com slash iPhone for more info. I know we mentioned it, but we're a little excited because Revision 3 did just celebrate its fifth anniversary with a live Dignation right here in San Francisco. If you didn't make the show or catch the live stream, you can relive the fun at this week's Dignation at revision3.com slash Dignation. And for everybody out there watching, we live on your questions, so email us, techzilla at revision3.com. Tech Health Product Reviews, How To's, You Ask Us, We'll Do It, but we need those emails. Don't be shy. Send them into techzilla at revision3.com. Even better, send us in a video question. Think of all the fun you can have and the admiration of all your friends and family when they see your mug on our show. Just keep it to around 15 seconds, upload it to YouTube, and send us a link in an email with the video question in the subject line. And as always, you can visit our forums at revision3.com slash forum. Share your thoughts, ideas, or comments with other fans of the show. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Until next time, you've been watching Techzilla.